Hi everybody, this is Symphonic Elk coming at you with my video for Beauty Comics Challenge. What 10 comics would you bring with you in a natural disaster? Oh my goodness, the waves are crashing in, the thunder, the lightning, the rain, the hail, the tornadoes, the hurricanes, no matter what part of the country you're in in the United States, there is a chance that your comics will be destroyed. But guess what? According to Beauty Comics, we're in the know. But not so much in the know that we can grab all of our comic books. We can only grab ten of them. And then we also need to show the five that we um, yeah, almost made a cut but didn't. Um, although I'm going to show seven, but that's just the way it is. So, anyway... These are the comic books that I would save, starting off with the seven that I wouldn't save. So, the first book I'm going to show is Funny Aminals. This book really isn't worth a whole lot. Um, it is important because it's the first appearance of Mouse by Art Spiegelman. And um, some of the cartoons and humor uh, were contributed by Robert Crumb of American Splendor fame. Um, as I've noted in a couple of my videos, one where I showed this in my comic haul when I got it, and then uh, another one about cultural significant comics, uh, Mouse had a really uh, significant impact on, on my life. Um, it's won a Pulitzer Prize. It's one of the, um, the single best comic book works of all time by uh, considered by most critics including myself well this is uh, the first appearance of mouse so there's a, a preview of mouse in, in this book and it's really interesting because you have on one hand mouse which is I mean it is somewhat adult because of the, the, the content the violence the um, you know the concentration caps camp setting etc I mean, it is a little bit adult, but the humor and the rest of the stuff in this book is a, is definitely adult humor. So it's kind of a, a weird mix of um, off-the-wall crude humor by Robert Crumb and um, very serious um, and important uh, comic book uh, work by Art Spiegelman. So that is number 17. Or number 7 on my ones that won't quite make to us. The next book is Sandman the Tempest. You probably can't see it, but this is The Ghost Second Printing. Oh uh, yeah, so this comic book is ultra hard to find. Um, I guess it's worth some money. But uh, it's just not that important to me. Um, still a cool book. Uh, my next book is Invincible Iron Man number 55, the first appearance of Thanos, Star Fox, Drax the Destroyer, and Kronos and the Blood Brothers. So yeah, this uh, book has a lot of first appearances, um, a lot of characters that at the time uh, probably weren't thought to be all that important to the Marvel Universe, but over the years have become um, very, very important, specifically, well because of the Marvel Cinematic Universe with Drax the Destroyer and, and the fact that during the 80s and 90s um, Thanos became uh, such a powerful and uh, important character. But doesn't make the cut. Next, The Amazing Spider-Man 129. The first appearance of the Punisher. I don't really have to explain a whole lot about this issue to anybody. Uh, it's a really cool one. And I guess I'm going to have to pause it for a second and yell at my dog. One second and I'll be back. Well, he's still growling, um, but hey, he's annoying. I'll tell you, other than my, my wife and my son, he is, my dog Bowser is my best friend. He's so annoying. And I know it's my own fault, but oh, so, so annoying. And in the past, I would have just re-recorded this video, but you know what? I'm lazy now, and that's just not going to happen. Anyway, so back to the books. Um, Amazing Spider-Man 129, the first Punisher. Pretty awesome. Uh, I'll tell you, 
I know this is a really important book to a lot of people, and I'm not going to say that it's not to me, um, but Punisher just never really, never quite connected with me as he, as he did with a lot of other people. Um, so, you know, it only falls on here on the list. <sighs> Moving next to Journey into Mystery number 85. This is the one with all the first appearances. Well, except for Thor and Jane Foster. This is the first appearance of Loki, the first appearance of Asgard, the first appearance of Baldur, Heimdall, and Tyr, the Brothers Three, the first... appearance of Odin and a cameo in the third appearance of Thor. So, um, I have not seen Black Panther, um, but I know before Killmonger, Loki uh, was considered the the best villain, the best done villain in uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he, he's my favorite. Uh, so I was really pleased when I got this book. I'm not pleased enough to save it from the imaginary fire thunder hurricane earthquake massive typhoon wave um but yeah still like it moving on we have detective comics number i believe 355 why can i never remember the number of this one 359 mm -hmm. First appearance of batgirl um well the first appearance of barbara gordon as the batgirl i think 139 is the actual first appearance of Batgirl. I, I don't remember. Anyway, this is one of my favorite covers. Uh, I really like Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. Um, yeah. But again, not enough to save her. Sorry, Barbara. Um, you just didn't make the cut. But thank you for, for being in my collection. Next! This is a book that I handful of people of people have seen when I um, completely knocked over my stand which as you can see is this on this black um, archival box and, and I made the point to say you know I actually do keep something in the archival box and it is Thorn Tales from the Lantern. Bone is my favorite comic book series of all time. I love it, love it, love it. Um, I am not lucky enough to own a first print of Bone Number One. I will one of these days. I've just never quite found it for the price that I that I wanted, at least at the first printing. I mean, I, I own a printing of it. Um, I actually own every issue of it. Um, as a kid, I really wanted Thorn Tales from the Lantern. Um, for those of you who do not know, uh, Jeff Smith used to work for the Lantern, which is the newspaper for Ohio State. Um, when he did that, he drew uh, a series of strips that came out, I guess, every day or every, however often that the paper came out. And the, the strip was named Thorn. Um, it was a precursor to, you know, Bone and, uh, and whatnot. And this is it. it. This is a collection of some of the strips from uh, the 80s. And, uh, yeah, it came out, you know, before Bone number one. It's really, 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 really hard to find. Um, there's not a lot of them. I can't remember what the print run's supposed to be, maybe 800 to 1,200. But on top of that, um, you know, people bought them in college. They got trashed. They get, when they moved out of college, they just didn't have There's just not very many out there. And this took me a long time to find for not a price that's so exorbitant that... Um, I didn't think it was worth it. Anyway, so that is the last book that doesn't make the cut. Um, it gets a place in my archi archival box, but not a place uh, on my boat. Moving on. So here is the list, or here is the books that I would 100% take with me in order of importance. Number 10, Giant Size X-Men number 1. Um, this is important to me for a couple of reasons. Um, first, as a little kid, so I said Bone is my favorite comic of all time, um, and that is true. I started uh, reading Bone when I was a teenager, uh, or, well, early teens. Um, but as a kid, X-Men, that, um, that was my favorite. I don't have X-Men number one like Alex does, but, you know, we can't all be Alex 
the comic order, even if we try. Uh, yeah, so when I was a kid, this was this was the book that I wanted. Um, every week or well, every couple of weeks, I would go to the Zippy Mart dying for the the next issue of X-Men, the next issue of Uncanny, the next issue of Classic X-Men, anything. I, I ate up X-Force, X-Factor, all of it. I loved it. Um, they were they were my favorite. Um, and, you know, it was hard to find comic books, even just to buy off the rack where I grew up. But um, you could almost always find X-Men, and they're, they're, they're something, something to behold. The next book, in the largest top loader known to man, because this book is about an inch taller than a normal magazine, is the UK magazine Warrior, and it is the first appearance of Marvel Man, which is Miracle Man, uh, and V for Vendetta. So you have uh, two of the most classic properties of all time, having first appearances in the same book, or uh, magazine in this case, and this is a, it's a hard one to find um, for a lot of reasons, but I mean, probably the biggest is that uh, this did not come out in the United States. It came out in the UK and maybe, maybe in Canada. Um, so you just don't see them that often. And I mean, Alan Moore, two big firsts. Um, and plus, if I ever need the extra plastic for anything in this post-apocalyptic natural disaster world that Beauty Comics has set up for us, um, I'm sure I can find something to fashion with it, maybe a, a bowl or something with the extra top loader plastic. So, you know, can't pass that one up. It's about survival, right? Uh, the next issue is Dime Press Number 4. Yeah, so... Uh, Hellboy. Pretty great. Um, most people think it's Next Men 21 as his first appearance. That is true in color. In the United States, his first appearance is San Diego Comic Con issue number two. And a lot of people think that's the first appearance. But it's not. The first, first appearance is Dime Press number four. And it came out, I believe, in Italy. Uh, yeah, it definitely, because that's the L's for Lyra. That's what uh, the Italians used to use before the Euro came out. And, yeah, it's just one of those books that I looked up for a long time. This is a 9.2, <clears throat> so um, there are not a lot of these in existence. Maybe a thousand, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, and, yeah, it obviously has Hellboy in the front. Pretty cool. Uh, my next book is Justice League of America number one. Um, there's not really a whole lot to say about this. Cool cover. Um, Justice League of America number one. I mean, yeah, people want it. Um, I don't know. It's already a little brittle, so I'm assuming it will burn better when I need to be warm in this post-apocalyptic world. So yeah, it's there. Next, here comes Daredevil, the man without fear. Number one. Oh, uh, yeah, so this is the first appearance, uh, an origin of Daredevil, first appearance of Foggy Nelson and Karen Page. And this is just one of those books. It's, you know, Daredevil's a classic character. This is his first appearance. It's a cool looking book, it's worth some money. It might burn well. Again, we move on. Next is The Incredible Hulk 181. Um, this is the book that everybody wanted growing up. And uh, I'm happy to say that I have it. Sure, I'd like a little bit better condition, but I will say this. For a 4.5, most of the damage is on the back, so it presents really well. Um, I am just, you know, psyched to have this. This is one of those books that, like I said, when we were kids, you know, you wanted this. You wanted giant-sized X-Men. Um, you wanted all of all of the X-Men titles, all of the, the key, the heavy hitters, and this is just one of them. It's just so iconic. So, yeah, 
thrilled to have it in my collection, and it makes the cut. I could also, since it's uh, graded, I can probably use it as a weapon if I need to. Moving on to the next book. It is The Avengers, number one. Yeah, again, this is sort of like Justice League of America, number one. It does not need a whole lot of description. Famous cover. Famous book. Um, yeah. Pleased to say that I have it. Next, we have Showcase, number 22, The Green Lantern, featuring the menace of the runaway missile. So, um, most of you know this book is the first appearance and origin of Hal Jordan as a Green Lantern, also the first appearance of Carol Ferris, um, the first appearance and death of Avon Sir, and obviously it's a classic cover. To me, the biggest first appearance in this is the runaway missile. Um, I don't really think the missile gets due justice. Um, you know, yeah, there's villains like the Joker and um, Loki and Thanos and all of that who appear in a lot of comics, but I'm going to tell you right now, the runaway missile, man, he is in a lot of comics, a lot of them. Uh, yeah, missiles are in every comic so this is a bigger first appearance than people actually think maybe that humor falls a little flat but oh well all right on to book number two this is the brave and the bold presents justice league of america number 28 the first appearance of the justice league and star of the conqueror nothing like Earth's greatest superheroes going up against the menace that is a large and fearsome starfish. Um, yeah, no, I mean, again, it's just one of those books that it speaks for itself. It's it's a great book to have. I'm, I'm super glad that I had the opportunity to purchase this. I'm, I'm thankful to have it in my collection. Um, there used to be a toy. It came out... Probably like five or six years ago, it was a uh, San Diego Comic Con exclusive that that redid this entire cover. It was a really large toy, and I, I had it. And I was, you know, was like, oh, I'd love to have the actual comic, um, but you know, it's just never going to work out. So that's probably not going to happen. Um, and then lo and behold, I was able to get it. I, you know, again, I just lucked out. Uh, it's nothing to do with my own um, hard work, I suppose. It's more to do just with, with stumbling into it. So, this is my last book. This is number one. And you might be thinking to yourself, and he showed some pretty big books. What uh, what could he have that's better than Brave and the Bold, number 28? And um, my answer is nothing. I, I don't have anything better than that. But this book is more important to me for a couple of reasons. Ultimate Spider-Man number one, which is also one of the books that I'm giving away in my 200 uh, subscriber appreciation contest. Not this one, but uh, another copy I have. And uh, so <sighs> I read comic books throughout my childhood um, up until I would say I was 16 or 17. Uh, realized at the time where I grew up, South Georgia, that reading comic books was not uh, helping my my cred per se. And uh, like I said, it was hard to get comic books um, down there. Still, still is actually. I think today it's probably more difficult in my hometown to get comic books than when I was a kid. I don't even know if they sell them anywhere. To be completely honest with you, but who knows? I'll check next time I'm home. Um. Anyway, so I stopped when I was uh, in high school and uh, went to college. And this comic came out, and just on a whim, I, I purchased it. And I, I fell in love with comics all over again. Um, this, this, the Ultimate Spider Man stuff was just amazing. Um, I remember just waiting and waiting and waiting for this stuff to come out. And so, yeah, that's when I got back into comics. 
and I collected from midway through undergrad through graduate school and then I uh, moved up to DC where I live now um, yeah, I kind of fell by the wayside had um, you know work and and other things such as really high rent um, so buying books was probably secondary um, and so that went on for a couple of years and um, one of my buddies who uh, buys and sells comic books brought this book in. He had sold it on the, I don't want to say the CGC forums, but it might have been on eBay. And it spurred my interest again. And um, it went online and went on eBay, found this for what was a good price, because I had uh, I'd already sold my copy years ago. And uh, it kind of got me back into comic books again. And fast forward to today, and uh, here we are. And you can see all of the books that I've managed to accumulate um, for better or worse condition, I suppose. So at the end of the day, this is not my most valuable title. Um, it's not my most culturally significant, historically significant. But when it comes to symphonic elk significant, this is, this is really the title that um, it really was a hallmark to my collecting and to getting me back into collecting again and I mean twice it, it did it twice um, so that's pretty powerful uh, that one book has um, the ability to do that so this was the one I would uh, I would take it would also fit nicely with one of my other ones if I needed snowshoes because um, I'm not really sure what type of um, natural disaster is coming. Um, I live in the mid-Atlantic, obviously, so it's possible that it's snow. Um, so, yeah, if push comes to shove, strap this bad boy on my feet, my foot, strap another one on my other foot, maybe the Hulk 181, I'll walk across that snow. Anyway, beauty, thank you for allowing me to spend way too much time talking to everybody. Um, I will put your information in the description not that anyone needs it because I'm sure they're already sub to you if they're watching my videos and uh, again I appreciate it everybody thanks for uh, for listening thanks for watching and thanks for spending a little bit of your time with me today hope you have a nice afternoon goodbye